Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is Saturday morning and I'm going to do an impromptu video because I didn't have enough time to finish everything I wanted to do in my live last week. So I am going to go live. Yes, I'm going to work on some projects. Yes, I am. It's Saturday morning and I have some things I want to get done. And so I thought I might as well just do an impromptu live. And if you're in here, fine. I'll chat with you. And if you're not, you can watch the replay or do whatever you want. This is the envelope that I painted last night in my live stream. I'm out as far as... I need to raise my camera just a little bit now. I lowered my camera when I did the Zoom presentation and it's almost too close to the table but this is the envelope that i painted last night in my live stream we had a giveaway for it and danny coleman won it and what i want to do to it is put some of this delta creative exterior interior varnish on it so that's the very first thing that i'm going to do so that oh after it's all dried after it's all dry we can mail it Hopefully before Christmas, Danny. <laughs> yes, definitely before Christmas. And look, I was having such a tassel with my paintbrushes last night. Look how dirty this is already. This is Murphy's Oil Soap. This was actually from a tip from uh, Gina Ahrens. Several months ago, she kept saying, soak your dirty brushes in Murphy's Oil Soap. So I... Got some, and that's what I'm doing. They de need a good cleaning. So let's get on another brush to do this. And I just put it in there, too, just to get it clean, although it's a it's a clean, pretty clean brush. But we'll get the, the clear varnish off of it. And I want this to dry good before I put it in uh, the envelope. This does have some red on it. What is it picking up the red from? I guess it's okay. Need a little bit more in here. I don't think you need a heavy coat on this, but you do want to get it all varnished. And if you're the person who won the red truck envelope, I gave a um, red truck snow globe away in my Thursday live stream. And I'd have to go back to get the name of the person that won it. But please email me. My email is in the description box below. Because I can't send it to you without your email address. I can't send it to you. Let me show it to everybody. I put up a uh, a video of it, a standalone video. But here it is. And it's been all varnished too. So it's ready to go except for I need a name and address. So please send me your address in email or if you're on Facebook. Now I'm going to set this one aside to dry. This one will go to Danny. This is the Doodle Prompt Pick 10 that we did last night in the live stream. I'm pretty happy with how this came out. I was looking at some of the Doodle prompts that have been done and just that have been posted already. Hashtag uh, Prompt Picks. If you put in hashtag Prompt Picks, you will find the different Pick 10 pages from the uh, Pick 10 prompt games that we play. So I'm pretty happy with this. But I did, I could not resist putting color on it and painting in some of the background toward the end. I, I had to do more to it. What do I want to do today? Well, I am doing the Carb December Challenge. Get this varnish out of the way. So I want to work on that today. But really what I want to do with it is let me get the eraser out here I'm going to work on in my book. Welcome to folks that are watching. Oh, 
to have people watching my videos. I appreciate it. What I'm working on with my December daily, I was going to do tags with nutcrackers, but I, I might have to do a series of those next year. I'm just not going to get them this year. So I have these envelopes, Christmas card envelopes that were given to me by my sister-in-law and old Christmas cards and I cut them up and I've made little tuck spots and the envelopes will hold envelopes will actually hold note cards or note letters little letters to, to document the days and the holidays and I can put anything you know I can put ephemera in there I can put different things in there photographs in there I think I've showed this before I haven't worked on it since the last time I've showed it but what I want to do how come this is sticking Oh, it's not sticking. I've got a bobby pin embellishment. <laughs> oh, it's not sticking, Mary. But what I want to do here is I want some numbers for my pages. And I think I'm going to stamp some off on some white cardstock. And I'm going to carve my numbers. And I think I'm going to make just big, bold, basic, bold numbers. And I'm going to put little, little snowflakes inside of them, I think. That's what I envision. And then I'm going to stamp them off on white paper. And some of these I could just stamp off on the envelope and get away with it. But I'm going to try to carve numbers 1 through 0 so that I can have them to stamp. And I could use them for other things too. But I kind of want them Christmassy. And uh, let's see. Let's break out the envelope here and just sketch out one. Break out the eraser. Can I break it out here? Yes, yes. I love my scissors holder that we made in Aunt Beck's Live. I, I don't think I could get along without it now because that's the first place I look for my scissors is in that scissors holder. I'll have to put a link to that video in the description box below. There's Aunt Beck. Hi, Aunt Beck. Hello, hello. I just decided to do an impromptu because I wanted to work on carving these numbers. I actually do want to finish this December daily this year. <laughs> and then maybe I'll work on last year's, which I started. Well, actually, I did a, a and completed a photo album for my little grandma and her mother. And they had that out at Thanksgiving. I was kind of surprised. <laughs> so I actually did do an album last year. It just was not really for me. So if I get this one done, I might work on the other one and complete it so I can have some completed December dailies. But Aunt Beck, I was telling them that the first place I look for my... Scissors now is in that scissors holder that uh, we made in your one of your sewing sessions. So that was pretty cool. Now what I'm thinking is I don't want big tall numbers. So, but let me let me draw out what I'm thinking. We'll just start over here, and I'll draw it out, and then when I get to carving it, I will zoom in a little bit more so you can see it better so this eraser is about oh that's not the one i want we'll use this one this eraser let me draw the outline of it maybe draw it a little straighter here comes the train I was rereading my chat, and a train came through, and Azra went, choo, choo, and I couldn't figure out what she was doing right then. And then I realized when I was reading the replay that she was commenting on a train coming through. <laughs> Scott and I were just leaving to get a few groceries before the snow arrives. We're supposed to get only about an inch, but there won't be anything on the shelves <laughs> if we wait much longer. You go get your groceries. So that you can be in for the weekend when the snow comes, Aunt Beth. Okay. I'm going to be carving, so I might be on for a while. I didn't expect a lot of people to come in because this is kind of impromptu on a Saturday. and 
I slept in. It's almost 11 o'clock Central Time, so it's got to be about noon your time. There's Mark. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mark, I did find the link to your your uh, cloche, and I put it in the description box of last night's video. And wow, you did a really nice job. Right there at the end where you were showing how everything worked, I'm going, wow, that turned out great. So welcome, Mark. So this this um, eraser is about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, maybe three and a half, guesstimating. Three and a half for one number. And I can get four numbers on an eraser. So what I'm thinking is just draw kind of a big fat number. They'll probably be different sizes. And these are going to be very hand carved, hand drawn, but they're going to be something. I may not want that one that fat, but I want it fat enough to put my snowflake in. And I don't want it like that. So I'm still sketching. <laughs> Let's see, let's bring it down like this. Like that. And then I'll have snowflakes kind of like this, just kind of nicked in there for my December daily. So there'll be one, and this one will be two. And I'm going to cut these races in half, I think. So I only ink a half of it. I think it'll be easier to cut them in half. Sort of like that. And they're going to be very hand carved. Very, very much handmade. But I thought they would be fun to put on my December daily. Yep. A Christmas potato stamp. <laughs> oh, Mark, you're so funny. Let's see. Let's get out to my... You mo No, Mark, that potato on a snow globe might come your way. I won't say it'll come your way before Christmas. Because I've got a lot of, of things going here. But a potato in a cloche, maybe. <laughs> you might be surprised sometime. I can't guarantee when. Let's see. I want to get out my pencil here and carving tools. These should go pretty fast. These should go pretty fast. Let's see. I might want to re-ink my stamp because it's probably getting... I need to order some colored ink. Let's see. I'm going to keep my box out because I'll probably turn it upside down. So I'm just ahead and black in this entire number because then I'll just carve star asterisks on it. I think I kept everybody up too late last night. Although I didn't go as late last night as I did the week before. <laughs> but I was getting pretty tired last night too. But I wanted to do these numbers so that I can start working on my December daily or it'll be Christmas and I won't have anything done. And this will be actually, well, it would take me, if I count each one as a carving, it would take me 10 days into carve December. I'll use that as my excuse if I don't get any more carving done. So there's, the, there's one and two. Let's go ahead and sketch out the rest, and then I'll cut, cut them all apart. Let's see. I'll need five of these. So there's two. Well... This should go pretty fast. I have so many things I want to work on. 
There's three. Welcome to everybody who's who's watching. For I am carving some numbers for my December daily. Let's make it here. And I could use them on other things, too. But these are going to be kind of my... Let's continue with this. Uh, I said three and a half. I'll just kind of do, draw a line halfway through here. Three and a half about. Three and a half about. Three and a half about. One, two, three and a half about. So, this will be number three. And I want them fairly big so that I can put the stars in them. And four, we'll make four like this. <laughs> Four. And five. Boy, this sweater's warm. Woo! I'm sitting right in front of the heat register, the heat vent, and boy, it gets warm in here. Five is going to be, have need some work done on it. Five, he's going to be just fitting in there. Six, we'll make six big and fat too. Seven. Today is Saturday, December 8th. People might be at Christmas parties or out doing some Christmas shopping. Putting up their Christmas tree. There's seven. Eight. Nine. I want these numbers to be fairly big so that I can get my little carved stars just kind of niched in there. Nine. And. And I like them because they're mine. They're mine. Ten. So, let's go ahead and just put some graphite down to transfer them. Now, I can get four numbers on one stamp, so I'll need, I'll need three stamps, and I'll have one blank side. Maybe to put some snowflakes or something on. I'm only going to do the numbers here, though. Four. Now I'm not going to cut them apart until I carve them because I think it'll be easier to hold on to them while they're all one big piece. One piece. I think the smaller pieces will be harder to hold on to.
Here's six. Nothing hard about doing this part, except for maybe getting your sizes right. Not that there is a right or wrong, but I do want them to fit the stamp. <laughs> Eight. Hi, Zoe. You're going to go to, uh, let's see, I've got paint on my screen. I am going to an 80s party and you're dressed gothic. You're doing that today? Have fun. An 80s Christmas party or just an 80s party? And what are you, how are you dressed gothic? Of course, you've got to have black leather, probably. Probably some black fingernail polish. <laughs> have fun, Zoe. Have fun. That's the important thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, I was hoping I wasn't going to have this trouble today, but it looks like I am. Actually, it wasn't too bad last night. We buffered once or twice right at the beginning, I think. I'm back. I was saying I'm doing these for my December daily. That's all I was saying. So I can page numbers. Sorry, 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 sorry. All right. So, I'm going to start carving. And let's put the scissors back so I can find them. I love my little scissors holder. And let's just turn this upside down and kind of keep it up toward the top. And I use the back of my... Let's see how, let's zoom in a little. Yeah, it's the internet. It's probably my service and YouTube. I don't think YouTube plays too good with mobile. But it's what does? Well, Zoom does, but, <laughs> but I've never Zoomed on live before. So I didn't, you know, that's a whole nother story. So one and two, we want to... I'm just going to carve all of these first, and I need my bone folder, and then I'll cut them apart. And I probably have to carve them one at a time, because if I transfer all the numbers first, then they'll get all smeared. So there's one and two. I put this sweater on. Boy, am I warm. Woo! Here's one. Yeah, I thought that I was going to do this anyway this morning, and it's just impromptu. I thought I would just come on and do it live. Shall I shade this in a little so I can see where I've 
what I have left when I'm carving. buffered again I don't know I don't know how how much we're going to uh, <laughs> how much we're going to get done without with all this buffering that I'm gonna keep at it I'm gonna keep at it I'll just have to keep on the buffer thing whoops I keep hitting the clamp the phone clamp I lowered it now I keep hitting it with my head. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to carve it out before I cut it in half. This might be kind of boring to watch, but hey. <laughs> if you got other things to do, I perfectly understand. And if you're watching on the replay, you have the ability to... Zoom through it, and that does not bother me at all. Do what works for you. Do what works for you. I imagine there are a lot of people out doing their um, Christmas shopping, catching up on their week. Zoe's going to, uh, Zoe is going to a, a party, and she's dressed gothic and i don't know if it's a christmas party it seems like it might be at this time of year. i don't know why it freezes like that sometimes my phone just totally freezes seems to be this rebuilt phone i'm not happy with my rebuilt phone but at least i have a screen hi arlene I don't know if you're still in here. I don't know who's in here and who's not. If you're in here, hi, Arlene. I've been having, I've been trying to carve, but my phone's been. Zoe's back. Hi, Zoe. Are you all dressed for your gothic costume? Hi, Cynthia. Arlene, sorry, guys. I don't know why it's doing that. Just hold tight. When it does it, I'll eventually get back. When my phone completely freezes like that, the only recourse I have is to take it off of the phone stamp that I clamp that I have and restart the phone. That's the only thing that will unfreeze that phone. It could completely freezes up completely freezes i don't know why i think that this is more of a of a phone hardware problem than youtube you know i just got to use what i have though and be happy with it i am carving some numbers for my december daily that's what i'm working on and they're really kind of basic numbers thank you arlene she says she's still here she just kept painting are you painting today Cynthia's here. Hi, Azure. Good morning, Azure, my lady. Azure's in the house. I think I'll use my scoop. This is more of a scoop blade. It's more like a, a scoop than a V shape. And it's really good just to get wide areas of negative space carved out. See, look at that. <laughs> uh, move this over here. I should have a piece of wax paper under this. Not to protect it so much as to uh, catch all the shaves. lovely M malaya welcome go brownies 
Cynthia said she did some sewing earlier. Cynthia says she's puttering around making brownies. Hmm. How's it going today? Oh. Well, I've only buffered five times in the last 15 minutes. And my phone froze. So does that give you an idea, Azure? But I'm still in a good mood. They haven't got me down yet. They've got me a little complainy, but... <laughs> Like, would you just stop and let me do my live stream? Let's see. I don't know how much of this I can get out with the big thick blade. I'll probably have to go back to my Z blade here. I'm just carving numbers for my December daily. And you'll see I'll put the, I'll be putting some snowflakes in there, make them a little more Christmassy. Thank you, Cynthia. I appreciate that. Cynthia says her sister buys the brownie mix and she makes them. How long have I been on? Uh, not too long. Let me check. Let's see. I have been on for, well, <laughs> I can't tell you because my timer says minus 20. <laughs> so probably about 20 minutes, maybe. Maybe a little longer than 20 minutes. A little, little bit longer. Maybe 30 to 45 minutes. I don't even know what time I went live. I did not check. I just said, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do it. Now, I've been watching the Carve December Instagrams. Those are fun to watch. B. Grob, G-R-O-B, has been doing some nice ones. And G, G. Brody, has been doing some nice ones. And then there's a whole host of others. If you put in hashtag Carve December, you'll see all the the De December car stamp carvings is a challenge for December. And they mostly post on Instagram. Uh, I don't post my Carve December on Instagram. I usually do videos of them. Like what I'm doing now. Should probably, but I just haven't gotten to the groove of doing that. What I put on Instagram are my pick tens, usually. <laughs> I try to put things on Instagram, and now I've gotten so that I put it on my community page of things like I do in my live stream that, that really I don't have snapshots of um, while I'm doing lives, which could be a carved December. <laughs> I just haven't done it. I'm not sure why. And I also, on my community page, I like to do shout-outs to other channels. Steph is back. Treasure. Hi, tra Treasure. How come I miss things? Who are you calling Treasure? I'm not seeing Treasure. There she is. Anna, hi. Oh, there you are. You were up above Cynthia. Hi, Anna. I was watching Anna's video this morning. She's making, oh, all those wonderful little mini books for 25 grandchildren. Oh, my goodness, Anna. <laughs> That'll keep you busy till Christmas. Well, that would keep me busy till Christmas. I like them, Anna. They're very, very darling. Very sweet. All right. 
let's see, I carve around this too a little here. This is very impromptu, uh, very unannounced, just decided I wanted to go online. Well, I kind of announced it a little last night in my live stream. I wasn't sure when I would be going on. I'm going to tip my camera a little so that you guys can see it a little better. I had to take it off the stand to restart it. There, I think that's a little better for you. And these letters are pretty basic, so they shouldn't be all that hard to carve. Kind of toward the edge here is kind of hard to get cleaned out, but... Now, I just want to take my small, tiny, number one, the blade, and I'm just going to make some little niches for, hopefully, it'll look like snowflakes when I stamp them off. Hopefully. Come on, get out of there. That one got a little fat. Oh well. And I'll just let it kind of fall off to the edge. And... We'll see what happens here. It's snowing. For Aunt Beck, it might be snowing. She said that they're expecting an inch of snow in their area. So her and Scott are going to the grocery store to get some groceries for the weekend. If you're going to snow, be snowed in, you better get you some groceries. These are representing snowflakes. You can't get too intricate when you carve on numbers this small. But you get the idea. I know what they are. And they're going to go in my December daily. So I'm happy. <laughs> they kind of look like little stars too. They're little asterisk stars. Let's do some on the number one here. I want to get back into the mode of watching videos. My days have been so crazy lately. Just crazy. Let's see. As soon as it came on, I froze. Oh, you probably came in just at the time that my phone froze. And uh, my phone froze up. And you probably came in just at the time that my phone froze up. So it's not you. It's, it's something to do with... I really do think that it has more to do with this rebuilt phone that I got. Because I did always have trouble with it buffering. But it, with my other phone, I never really had that problem with the phone freezing up. And the only way I can restart it, to get it going again, is to restart my phone. And that means it has to turn off and restart, you know, and then I get all the notifications. I come back into YouTube. The YouTube app is still going, so I can still resume it. But I think this is more of a phone hardware problem. Now, let's go ahead and stamp it off, and I'll clean it up. And, of course, I turned my box upside down, and the lid, you know how that goes. <laughs> I don't want to put masking tape or anything on this. I put this on it, but... All right. So let's just push all these shavings to the side here with my coffee that's getting cold. 
that's the end of the pot. I had my first cup early this morning. All right. So I'm just going to stamp it in black. And I'm going to stamp it off in my little, my little book here first. I'm getting toward the end of this. I think I will work on the back of some of these papers for these. But we'll just keep going here with my numbers. What did I do with it? <laughs> Let's stamp it off. I might have to re-ink this stamp. I've been using it. Today's the 8th, so I'll, I want to carve all the numbers so I can get to the, get putting them in my December daily. And I want to do 1 through 31. And I might do some tip-ins. Oh, I'm kind of liking that. Let's clean it up a little. Along the edge of the two here. And a little bit in here. Now, it doesn't hurt to have those little lines in there. But since I'm doing it on my December daily, I do want it a little cleaner. I know a lot of people like to leave the, the scratchy lines inside, which really leaves it a nice artistic effect. But I kind of want to clean them up. Let's see, the one the one is just right around the edge here. Come on. Get out of there. Come on. It's not wanting to move. Come on, get out of there. There. And around the top. And a little bit down the back. And I'm kind of going to leave that curvy line, but right underneath of the one. Right underneath here, maybe. Carve that out a little. And maybe straighten this up a little. If I can. And I see I've got a little bit more in here to clean up. I'm surprised I'm not buffering. I'm concentrating, and it's usually when I concentrate that it starts buffering. It's just like it knows. Mary's not paying attention. Let's buffer. All right, let's just try it one more time. This is just my stamp off book here. Where's my stamps? And then I'll cut it in half. Well, I don't want to cut it in half until I... Well, no, I better cut it in half first. Because I might cut through the other numbers. So I better cut it in half first. Lovely says they're expecting a foot of snow. Wow. Hi, Kathy. Welcome, welcome. Arlene had to go. Her granddaughter's is going to video call. Gotta go. Oh. Her, her granddaughter's going to call her on video. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. Zoe says it ain't going to snow here, just rain. Thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie had to... Step out of the room. She's a busy lady. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this stamp in half now because if I don't cut it in half now, I might I might cut the numbers that I carve on the back off. So I'm just going to cut it in half, hopefully here. If I can see where I put that cut line.
these erasers are very easy to cut through. Very, very easy to cut through. So there's one and two. Now I want to do three and four. And I probably have to do those separately. I'm happy with these. I'm happy with these. I'm happy with how they're turning out. Let's go ahead and... Let's see. I should have been... Well, no. Let's put three here. Except for I think what I want to do is make sure that my ink is stamped off here. It is. So, <laughs> I need three. I'm going to leave these on the paper, I think. It will fit. Where's my bone folder? Let's transfer the design. It's just graphic lead on the front. Soft lead pencil. Can't see it very well. Let's detail it. How did I do that? Three. Not hard to carve these at all because they're they are pretty bold. They're big and bold, so it's just carving out the the negative areas. Let's shade it in here. I like these gel pens to do the shading. If I use my R2 pen or any pen that has soluble ink, it'll smear. And these gel pens, this is just a big Atlantic, it's a gel pen. It won't smear on me, on the eraser. And I do like to kind of detail these so that I can get an idea of what my stamp is going to look like. These are going to be page numbers for my December daily. That's where I'm going with these stamps. And it's, it's for my uh, Carve December. Uh, Carve December challenge. I was playing a, with some doodle stamps. I should stamp all those off and put them in my December daily as part of the challenge. And I was thinking I'd take pictures and of my snow globes toward the end and put them in my December daily. Kind of make it a, <laughs> a composite art journal. A December daily is your memories. It does not have to be a bunch of photographs of family or, you know, whatever. It's your memories, how you, how you spent your December. And you may not celebrate Christmas in the traditional way. You may go to a ski lodge. You may have a stay day vacation at home. You may just relax and watch movies all weekend. Uh, or you may go the other way and spend time with your family it's it's how you share how you uh how you celebrate your december and we make it december for the entire month you don't have to do an entire month you don't have to do it day by day you could do it by tradition at beck last night oh my goodness when i was to cart when i was painting that snow globe she told the most wonderful story about the Christmas spider. I'd never heard that story before. And I'm going to paint a Christmas spider snow globe. I'll probably do that standalone video. And I, I will probably do it on an envelope. No promises. Because, well, I make promises and then I get into trouble. But I'm thinking what I want to do is, is to do it on an envelope and send it to Aunt Beck. It was a wonderful story of the Christmas spider 
how he spun the tinsel on the Christmas tree. You lovely M Malaya, M Malaya, is that how you pronounce your name? I've been making December glue book junk journal memory book. Yay! Those are fun. Those are fun. I love the junk journals. And you know, with all the Christmas ephemera that's out there, you could do some wonderful junk journals. And it's not really junk journals. It's using your Christmas, old Christmas ephemera. Like Tim Holtz has those um, box of lights, you know, the... I think Stephanie had some paper of those she was showing in one of her halls that when she went to Michael's. Or was it the actual little box, Tim Holtz box? I can't remember. And you're putting cards in there and wrapping paper and probably packaging from the gifts on Christmas. I'm... Achoo, excuse me. I'm going to sneeze again. Achoo, excuse me. I guess I got too close to that eraser carving there. <laughs> I'm not allergic to it. I just had to sneeze. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, little boxes that are reprints of vintage decorations. How cool. Those are Tim Holtz, aren't they? You know, a lot of that Tim Holtz stuff, he had a video out not too long ago of, of ideas, holiday ideas. A lot of the things he used, I'm going, when did you publish those? <laughs> How come I don't see them in my area? <laughs> I couldn't tell you what they are now, but a lot of the things he used, I've, I've never seen before. So I don't know if they're just coming out or if they just come out in certain regions of the country. I don't know. And I couldn't tell you what they were now, but I'm going, huh. <laughs> All right, let's put some little, little snowflakes in here. If I can. Stephanie, do you know, or anybody in here, do you know if this archival ink will stay on foiled paper, metallic paper, like, like this. This is like a foil paper. I guess I could try it. I'm thinking it might rub off. Stays on. I might need to use stays on. I don't think my stays on is, is as juicy, though. And I don't have a stays on re-inker. I like my archival inks. If I could get that ink to stay on that foiled paper, it might be nice to do my numbers on foiled paper. You haven't tried it. Why don't I try that right now, just to see, because I'm curious. Of course, we might need to let it dry. Of course, now this is embossed, so it'll be a little bumpy, but let's see how this too works. Now it's embossed. Let's heat set it. I would want, I do have some Tim Holtz, I think it's Tim Holtz foiled paper that's not embossed. Looks like. 
like it's staying pretty good. You probably rub it off with alcohol, but that's to be expected. I think it'll stay pretty good. I'm going to dig out my... I won't do it today because I'd have to hunt for it. I have some metallic paper that's not embossed. It might be fun to do those numbers on metallic paper for my December daily. I think I will. We'll just carve these today. I won't bore you with a half an hour of looking for my metallic paper. You would hear me in the, go in the background saying, I know I have it. I know it's here somewhere. <laughs> oh, dear. Where did I put it? That's going to change next year, too. I'm getting organized next year. <laughs> that doesn't mean I won't lose my scissors, though. Although I'm not having as much trouble with my scissors now because I put them in Aunt Beck's scissors holder. She got me, she got me organized there. That's the first place I look for my scissors. There. Let's stamp off the three and see how that looks. Where's my book? All right, what did I do with my book? <laughs> here it is. I'll put it up here. I'm inking up the stamp. I don't know if you can... Yeah, I guess you can see it. Might have to clean it up a little. Yeah, I think I'll hand out that foiled paper. I've got a little cleanup to do here along the edge. Hunt up that foiled paper might look really nice to put my numbers on for my December daily. And where else? I cleaned that. I cleaned that. I think that's about it. Let's do another stamp off. Oh, yay! So there's one and three. Oh, I'm loving these. <laughs> if I do not say so myself. Here's four. Now, where's my two and four? That's, that works good. All the odd numbers and the even numbers. One, three, two, and four. I didn't plan it that way. <laughs> plan it that way. That would be a mind mapping thing. All right, there we go. Now let's detail it. We can bring this forward down a little bit more and just let it go off of the stem there. And the same, well, this one needs to be shorter, but that one can't go off. So these are pretty easy to uh, carve. They're big, bold, and so you're leaving, you're just carving away the negative space and then just niching them with the smaller blade to make little snowflake star type things. And I'll be shooting at two birds with one stone my carved december i could actually say i've got 10 days done here <laughs> 10 numbers a number a day 10 stamps let's see let's just carve along the edge here i got my scoop stamp out that'd bring me up to like day 14 or something but i'll probably do some other carving too I really like carving on these erasers. I really do. I on Twitter, Pentel 
had a, they had tweeted a picture of these Pintel erasers, and I commented on their picture and saying, they're not just for erasing, they make really good carving if we would just make them a little bit fatter. I don't know, they, no, I, as far as I know, nobody replied to it, my comment, but I'll keep bugging them, because they really do make nice carving. They make nice carving. I like it better than the Speedy Carve. And they don't dull my blades. My blades are, these blades have been in here forever, and they, it, it, they don't dull the blades. Well, this one might be getting a little dull now, but it's one of the original blades that came with the thing. And I've had these blades for over a year because I got them last year for Carved December. But I haven't been carving linoleum. I've done a few testing other carving material. But so far, I like these erasers best. If they would just wise up and realize that these erasers are for more than erasing. <laughs> I'm just a little old lady out in the middle America. Out in the boondocks in Nebraska. Where's Nebraska? <laughs> I know when I was still working, I took a, data a database course. That was in Wisconsin. We took, took a database course that was taught at the University of Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, when you take one of those company sponsored courses you get people from other companies and uh it's not just your company and there was a lady in there from Myanmar which used to be um oh I know the country you guys could probably tell me but I remember it as being from Myanmar and when it came time to introduce ourselves everybody was ooing and aahing because she was from Myanmar um uh, what was that country? I can't remember what the country was. It's a well-known one, but they they re, the country's been na renamed to Myanmar. And uh, you know, I was okay and everything, but when it, <laughs> when it came time for me to introduce myself, I said, "And I'm Mary Abrams from that far away, distant country known as Nebraska." <laughs> Uh, oh dear. Well, I gotta laugh. The teacher, the teacher that taught it was from England. So we were an international class. And I don't know where everybody else is from. Wisconsin, I think. Well, I think I can kind of niche these. Burma. Was it Burma? Hi, Crafty. Burma. I think it was Burma. She was a pretty, pretty little, I call little girl. She was a lady. She was a young lady. She's pretty. Very pretty. But I was, <laughs> I was going, I'm from that far away country known as Nebraska. <laughs> I was kind of playing off of her, her, I'm from Myanmar story. They took it good. I, I did not mean it sarcastically. I meant it to be funny, and that's how they took it. That was an interesting class. I I kind of miss working. I miss the programming field. I wish that we would have had more opportunity. Once you're in a certain area, like I was the old legacy mainframe programmer, once you get into that area, it's pretty hard, especially if you're a contractor, it's pretty hard to to get a company to sponsor you into the newer languages and services and everything because they want people that have already had the training. And you can go take the training, but then you have, they want the experience. So 
it was six of one and half a dozen of another. And as long as year 2K and a little, a few years afterwards was a, around, we did okay. But then around 2000, and I would say around 2005, 2007 is when it really started dying out for me. I still worked. I worked until 2011, was my last full-time job. And then I did a couple of contracting positions after that. But eventually, the work just kind of dried up. All right, let's stamp this off. But now I'm doing YouTube. So no complaining, Mary. I'm having fun with my art. All's well that ends well, <laughs> I guess. But I do miss the programming. I miss it because it's like solving puzzles and telling stories and making things work. Of course, there's all the negative part of it, too. There's bugs. <laughs> the exotic end of corn. <laughs> so true. So true. All those corn mazes. You could get lost in some of those corn mazes. Look, I don't even have any dirty stuff. One little one down here toward the bottom. Let's get him out of there. Kind of carve that one, too. All right, we're going to leave four alone. So I've got four stamps already. One, two, three, four. Let's work on... I've got to open a new package. Uh, where's my new package? Did I not bring it? Oh, it's up here. We're ready for five and six. Thank you guys for keeping me company this morning. <laughs> yes, the exotic land of corn. Although, now they're planting a lot of soybeans around here. Um, in that town where we go shopping, they have these big uh, ethanol plants, which uh, they process. And I don't know if they use the soybeans for ethanol. I'll have to ask. But uh, a lot of ethanol. And you see these, the farmers around here no longer, no longer drive these little farm trucks. They're into semis. You you don't see a farm truck on the road during harvest. It's just it's just not done anymore. They're driving these big old semis down the highway. And boy, do they like to get on your tail. They like, especially if you're a lady. They get on your tail and then they intimidate you. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Ruby. Ruby, I'm carving, I'm carving stamps for my December daily. I got one, two, three, and four done. I'm ready to do five and six. That's nine and zero. That's four and three, one and two. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, there they are. Here's five and six. So these I can carve both at the same time, but when I do the back, I have to cut it in half. And they're going pretty fast as far as carving. They're pretty, just pretty basic numbers. They're big and fat numbers. So they're, they are not hard to carve as far as that goes. There's not a lot of intricate detail to them. And if I niche it, it's just a snowflake falling. <laughs> oh, I didn't get that, but I'll get it when. I'll get it when I detail it here. So this will be number five. Whoops. Got to make that a little curvier. Yeah, I wanted to do this last night in my live stream, but it was getting pretty late. It was getting pretty late. So I just called it a night. I think I signed off around 11, which would have been around 12 Eastern Time. About 9 California Time, Pacific Time. Which is late enough. I get, I don't think I do, when I get tired, you, you just don't do your best. You, you work on it. What well, depends on what you're doing, if you're really into it. 
So there's five. Crafty says, our farmers go out and slow traffic down because everyone else wants to go faster than allowed. Especially when it's ticket day for the cops. <laughs> so your farmers kind of help out the, the cops? Is that what you're saying? Well, I think the truck drivers around here like to intimidate you. They'll get right on your tail. And I'm already going. They uh, they increased the speed limit. Now, I don't know if they increased it on our country highway coming down here. But on some of these highways, they've increased the speed limit to 70 miles an hour. I think it's only 60, maybe 65 around here on, on our country highway. But I'm going the speed limit and you've got a big old truck full of corn. What are you on my tail for? And sometimes I'll pull over and let them by, just like, would you just leave me alone type thing. And other times, I'll slow down more. I get stubborn and say, you're going to be that way. You just have to slow down yourself. <laughs> so it, it really kind of depends on how much they've irritated me. <laughs> but I don't think it's too safe for them just to get on your tail and intimidate you. That's not safe. Now, I told you the story about me getting my, well, it was my very last tri uh, traffic ticket that I ever got. <laughs> I learned my lesson. That was in Kentucky. I was working a contract down there in 1998, 1999. And uh, Louisville, Kentucky is quite a large city. And it's, it's it, the, you know, rush hour on their, on their, interstates going around town is very busy in the morning and it was raining cats and dogs and I thought that I was just keeping up with the traffic and I probably was but this car got in front of me and slowed down he was trying to slow me down and it irritated me you know I didn't slow down well, I had to slow down some. I went around him. That was there. Another car got in the other lane, but I finally maneuvered my way around that guy that was slowing me down, making me mad. I finally got around him. Well, it wasn't too long after that. I started seeing flashing lights in my rearview mirror. I'm going, "Oh no, that was an unmarked cop," and it was. It was an unmarked patrolman. His car was not marked. And the flashing lights were not on. I'm used to a, a patrolman having flashing lights on top of the car. So where you can see them, you know, like up above your windshield. His flashing lights were on his, on his um, license plates. You know, and then when I finally, you know, I pulled over and stopped. I wasn't going to try to get away from him or anything like that. That would not be a wise thing to do. And when he came to the door, it was just pouring rain. He had a cloak on and his cap, you know, he looked like a legitimate patrolman. I didn't ask for his badge number, but I should have. Um, but <laughs> I tried to explain. I, I tried to tell him that I did not realize that he was a cop. And I had an out-of-state license plate, so he should have realized that I don't drive in Louisville on a regular basis. I was just there working a contract. But he wouldn't let me talk. He was mad. He was one mad cop. He was mad because he was in the rain. <laughs> he was standing out in the rain and I was trying to tell him that I didn't realize that he was cop. And he wouldn't let me finish. So I shut up. <laughs> I shut up and let him give me the ticket. So eventually I moved back to India. Indiana, and I had to transfer my insurance because um, not all the companies that write down in Louisville write in Indiana. And so I went with a different company and I was telling my insurance agent about that incident and I got a ticket and I paid it. I just said, I'm not going to fight you. I was speeding. But I didn't think that he was very polite, unmarked vehicle cop. I didn't 
think too much of the way he picked me up. And I was telling my insurance agent about it, and he was trying to look it up in the DMV records, and he says, there's no record of it. He said, there's no record of you getting that ticket. And I said, huh? <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure that when I sent the ticket in, it was to a legitimate address. Well, that may have been a fake cop. I don't know. There was... Uh, about that time down there, there was I was reading in the newspaper that there was a lot of controversy about legitimate patrolmen picking on single ladies who are probably legitimately speeding, that they seem to single them out, and I think I got singled out. <laughs> but so it didn't affect my insurance rates when I had to buy new insurance. He said there's just no record of that happening. And that kind of amazed me. That I thought, well, maybe their computers were being kind to me. Maybe their computers understood more than the cops did. <laughs> and that's the last speeding ticket that I ever got. In fact, that would have probably been about 20 years ago. I was good after that. No more unmarked cops chasing Mary down the highway. And I do try to stay within the speed limit. Um, it's kind of hard when you're being intimidated, and I do think that the semi-truck drivers around here have fun intimidating people, forcing them to go faster because they're bigger. I don't know how these numbers are going to turn out. So that's my speeding ticket story. I'm not going to give you my license plate number. <laughs> I haven't gotten a ticket. I lived in Madison after that for 13, 14 years. Never got a ticket. Never got a ticket. Moved to Nebraska. I've been back here for about two years. A little over two years, I think. No ticket yet. Let's see what you guys are saying. Hi, Joan. Welcome, Joan. Treacherous. Yeah. If you got a lot of curves that are intimidating you, I would definitely just pull over and let them by. Let me... I'm buffering. I'm buffering, but I'm still live. If I... If I lose my data connection, I'll be right back. I was reading uh, Crafty's comment. Our speed limit is 60 miles an hour, but the curves are 30 or 40. They still manage to end up in the ditch or in a house. Yikes. <laughs> it isn't safe. It's awful. Hi, Gloria. Welcome, welcome, Gloria. L Lillian says, our cops are all unmarked, but are white. Not too obvious when everyone is into white cars. <laughs> oh, I think our patrolmen here are... are in Nebraska, they mark their vehicles, and I'm used to their red lights being up on top, their flashing lights. In Nebraska, I think they're all... Now, I could be wrong. I don't think I've seen an unmarked patrolman here in Nebraska, but I really haven't been looking either. They're probably here, and I just... They're probably white cars. <laughs> That's probably why I haven't seen them. <laughs> they're probably here. Oh, and I have to tell you, I have to tell you, I was so sad. I was reading the obituaries in our paper. And, uh, well, it wasn't the obituaries, it was the news. And they had a news item of a house fire. And when I read the name of it, it said that one man died. And when they gave the name of the man, I'm going, that was the attorney that I used to work for when I just got out of, out of business school. I went to business school. I went to the university. And then I went to a business school, took legal assistant. But uh, um, and then I got out of there and I worked for this attorney for a summer. His regular secretary was not a legal assistant, but it was a summer job. And it was a temporary job. I worked, she was on maternity leave. And he was the attorney that I worked for and I liked him so well. And if that was really him and not a, not the same name, but I think there's only one of them in Lincoln. And to think that he died in a house fire just breaks my heart. 
just breaks my heart. He's getting elderly now, and so it makes a lot of sense that it would be him because he was older than me. But he would go, when it was time to quit for the day, five o'clock rode around and he'd go out of the office door. You know, you got to think of this kind of like a city office building with the hallways and all the doors going down there. You hear him sing, oh, Jim Tucker sings for his supper. And he'd be singing that down the hallway. Man, I hope that wasn't him. It was the same, it was his name. I should call his because I know who his, uh, he was a partner in a law firm. And I should call there and find out if that was him. And send a sympathy card. Of course, they probably wouldn't. Well, one of them, one of the attorneys might know me from way back when. But most of them wouldn't know me. Because, you know, that was a long time ago. But when I read that, it just broke my heart. He was too nice to die in a house fire. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. Now, I need to carve... I need to carve out this six, and I'm not sure how I'm going to carve it. I think I'll do the circle with my little... That just happened this week. Whoops, I went too deep. I can't get it out. When you read something like that about someone you know, it just breaks your heart. It breaks your heart because he was a nice man. I liked him a lot. He gave me a bonus. <laughs> Back then, the bonus is, you know, to get a bonus for a temporary job. You know, hey. And I bought me, I still have the shoes and the sweater that I bought. I bought a shoes and a sweater because I needed clothes. I was just out of school. I bought me a pair of shoes, big old clod shoes and, you know, I think the 1970s shoes. I bought me a pair of shoes and I bought this hoodie sweater. I still have the sweater. It's, it's packed and in storage up in what shoes are too. Joan says, gosh, that's sad. I know how you feel. It's a shock when it's somebody you know and like. Yes, it is. It's just a shock. He had several, um, he was, the, 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 the article said it, he was 84, so it, it wasn't his son or any, anybody like that. I'm pretty sure it was probably him. But he had several children. Probably, well, they would probably be just a little bit younger than me. Because he's probably about 20 years, not quite 20, 17, 15 years older than me. All right, let's put some, I don't like this. It's, I don't know if I can clean that up or not. A little better let's put some let's put some snowflakes in there or stars or whatever pretty decorative so I was kind of sad to read his obituary he was too nice to die like that I hope it was smoke inhalation you know like maybe he went to sleep and never woke up rather than burning If it has to happen to anybody in a fire, I hope that that's it. And that would probably typically be it. I don't think he smoked. I don't I don't remember him ever smoking. He sang. He sang, oh, Jim Tucker sings for his supper. And however the rest of it goes. Five o'clock, you can hear him going down the hall. Oh, Jim Tucker sings for his supper. <laughs> I liked him a lot. He was a general practice attorney. And in fact, <laughs> you know, hey, I was out of school. I was still learning, you know, I was still learning stuff. And people would call and um, wanted to consult for a divorce. 
I swear, the whole town of Lincoln, this is Lincoln, Nebraska. I swear that summer, the whole town of Lincoln were getting divorces. Or they all called him. <laughs> and I'd make his appointments back, back to back, like from from 3.30 to 4.30, from uh, 4.40 to, you know, I wouldn't give him much time <laughs> between appointments. He came out and said, don't make my appointments back to back. <laughs> You're making work too much. And then we were kind of laughing about the number of divorces that summer. And he said, Mary, you're divorcing the whole town of Lincoln. <laughs> I said, well, they call. They call and want to talk to you. You know? <laughs> we were busy that summer. I don't know. That was in, that had to be like around 1977, up around in there. I don't know where all the divorces came from, but he was busy that summer, I'll tell you that. I got a bonus out of the deal. <laughs> he must have made some money. <laughs> I'm going to leave that six just like that. He must have made some money that summer because he gave me a bonus. But then his secretary liked working for him too. And she came back, so I was out of work. And then I worked for um, a legal printing company. Now, you got to remember, this is 1977. Uh, there were probably mainframes then. But the PC world in the 1970s was... There weren't that many home computers, and it was still a, there were hardly no, a, we did not have a computer in the office. There were no business computers, at least in the smaller offices. And uh, I went to work for a printing company that printed law reviews and um, helped them input all the law reviews for because there's a big law college in Nebraska, and uh, they printed law reviews, and of course it's all, com it, it was computerized there, but not like it is today. I mean, today it's all on the internet. There was no internet then. And uh, that was an interesting job. That's how I used my legal assistant degree. <laughs> Legal assistant at that time was new, new too, but it was such an interesting field because you got to learn about real estate and it was taught by the local attorneys who were, one was the attorney general, because it was Lincoln, Lincoln was the capital, and the criminal law course was taught by the uh, uh, Nebraska attorney general. That was interesting. Real estate was taught by real estate attorneys. Okay, we've got a little real estate law. Um, of course, the general practice law, like the divorces and stuff like that, family law. And then there were um, probate laws, probate courses. So it's kind of interesting as a legal assistant. You, you know, you'd take courses of how to interview people, initial, the initial interviews, stuff like that. It was interesting. Let's go ahead and stamp this off. I'll have five and six done. I'm just chattering away here. Hi, Lucia. Welcome, welcome, Lucia. How good to see you. What did I do with my stamp? I'm carving numbers this morning, Lucia, to put in my December daily. I think I'm going to stamp them off on foil. This is an embossed foil. I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i got some mirror paper, some foiled paper that's not embossed. And I think I'm going to stamp them off on there. It seems like this archival ink is, is holding pretty good on it. So these are going to be page numbers for my December daily. And they're just carved numbers with little starry snowflakes. Real simple. I got four more after these two. And I thought I'd just come online and stamp them off. Carve them up. Stephanie says, I think the laws for divorce got easier about that time. And didn't, 
Yeah. Yes, I agree, Stephanie. The divorce laws used to be so strict. I mean, you know, and a lot of the states eased up on on getting, you know, the restrictions for divorce. There were still some restrictions. I mean, I'm pretty happy with those. That six is kind of flat on top, but maybe if I cut it here. See if I can cut. I'm going to have to cut these because to cut, to carve the back sides. Let me get my hand out of the way. Now I'm going to, I'm going to curve this six a little more here. Maybe with this one. Still a little flat on top, but it'll work. So there's, I'm happy with how these stamped off. There's five and six. So I, I'm, I'm ready to do seven. Seven and eight, nine and ten, and then I'll be done. Woohoo! And then talking about memories, oh, how I got off on these stories. Fire, working for an attorney there in Lincoln. Gosh, that was in the 70s. I'm getting old. <laughs> There's seven. Where's eight? We'll do eight. Six and eight. So let's see, what have you been up to? You're behind on your December daily? <laughs> Me too. Me too. I was going to do those nutcrackers on the tags. There's no way I'm going to get them done. So I I figure that if I do tags, if I do one every week, well, not every week, one a month would be 12. I need at least 31. So if I do two a month in 2019, I should have enough by 2019. I still want to do my nutcrackers, but I'll never get them done now. So I went to this Christmas envelope journal. I'm going to kind of curve that seven down. And these numbers are very basic. They're just kind of this. I think I want this to curve a little too. So let's see. Lillian says, so true, Joan, and yet there are still some bat battered wives. Yes. The young wives of the 50s finally realized that they could have a life besides being the clothes washers, babysitters, cooks, and house cleaners. That's true. Now that life of being a housewife is perfectly okay when it works. But when... A wife is expected to do that just because she's a woman. Well, you know. And if she's unhappy, if she's getting beat up, then, you know. And if she wants out of it, I think that's legitimate. But there are a lot of people today, a lot of ladies today, who are the... the housewives that clean the houses and make the meals and raise their kids who are perfectly happy doing it. So if you're happy, that's good. You've achieved it. If you're not happy, I think it is much easier to get out of it than it was for our mothers and our grandmothers. Well, they didn't have any opportunity. They, they probably had no, well, very little some of them got out of it and worked and some ran their own businesses and and that but it was hard to support themselves back in back in their day and that i understand <laughs> of course i could probably if i absolutely needed to i could i know i could go do something i'm you know, I'm perfectly capable. All right. So, 
going to carve seven and eight and nine and ten and then I I'm going to stamp them off but for my December daily when I put them in my December daily I'll do that offline I'll stamp them off in my book here but I want to stamp them off I think on foiled paper come on Yeah, that summer, that summer, I think that we divorced the whole town of Lincoln. It seemed like it. More than he was usually handling. He thought that I had something to do with it. I'm going, no. They call, want an appointment, so I just set it up for him. Maybe your, your other secretary was trying to convince him not to get a divorce. I don't know. I didn't say that to him, but... She probably said, are you sure? <laughs> think of the consequences. And they'd say, okay, we need to think this a little bit more. And she wouldn't make the appointment. No, I don't know that. I'm just yakking. I'm just saying, why did I make so many appointments? <laughs> and, and maybe she made more. Maybe they were just teasing me. I don't know. It was too long ago. I don't remember. <laughs> I remember... The, Making all those appointments, though. And he came out and he told me, don't make so many appointments back to back. I need a break, lady. <laughs> You're working me too hard. And it's just sad. I just cried to think that he might have died in a house fire. I just, it, I just cried to think of that because he was really a nice guy. Everybody liked him. And I just love to hear him sing going down the hall at 5 o'clock. Old Jim Tucker sings for his supper. <laughs> All right, what are we chatting about? Joan says she worked in a battered person shelter in Florida. She lasted six months. It was just too sad. I'll bet it was. I'll bet that it was. Yeah, those ladies don't deserve that. Nobody deserves it. Unless they instigate it. But even then, there's other ways to settle things. Thankfully, I never had to go through anything like that. The seven's going pretty fast. What else is going on here? I'm still here, Aunt Beck, and Lucia came in. Lucia says, I've been working a lot and spending time with the new babies. Aw. You enjoy those grandchildren, Lucia. They're going to grow up. Of course, you'll enjoy them when they're older, too. You'll be going to ball games and Christmas parties and birthday parties and swimming and camping. And you'll you just enjoy them. That's what grandmas are for. That's what I tell my brother. <laughs> he'll, he'll come. He goes up to, to visit my nephew, his son. And uh, his little granddaughter likes to play school. And he'll tell me when he goes up there, he says, well, I'm going to school today. And I say, well, that's what grandpas are for. <laughs> he says, yep. And off he goes to school. Off he goes to school. I got such a kick out of it at Thanksgiving. I should paint a picture of that just for my own memory. At Thanksgiving... Her grandma and uh, her grandpa were called into class, and she was a school teacher. I got to be the principal, but I couldn't stay in the classroom because it made her nervous. So I go out of the classroom, but um, uh, I peeked in there, and there was grandma and grandpa sitting at two chairs facing the, facing the blackboard, and they were learning. I don't know what they were learning. 
to count to a hundred, I think, or addition or something. She was, she's always the school teacher and grandpa comes home and I say, what did you learn today? <laughs> he enjoys it as much as she does, I think. I think he's a grandpa. He, he's, she's got his heart. She's stolen his heart. But she's the only grandchild on both sides. So she's, she's a loved little girl. Ruby's in the house. Gloria's here. They're talking about being a stay-at-home mom. Aunt Becca's going to go run and make grilled cheese sandwiches. Yum. That sounds good. That sounds good. I like to make them too. Only I like to make them gourmet style. Which my brother just says, just put cheese on it and melt it. You know, cheese and butter and get it nice and crispy. Uh, I like to make my grilled cheese with, uh, first of all, I like the 712 grain bread, which we don't have any, but uh, I like to use that, and then like provolone cheese, and then I'll throw some walnuts on it, and some dried cranberries, yum, toast it up real good, and he's got a panini maker that I never knew he had, now that I know he has it, I'm into the sandwiches. But I don't buy that 12 grain bread a lot because it's kind of expensive. So we don't have it that much. And he just likes his plain old white bread. Just, bread and cheese is, suits him fine. Don't do all that fancy stuff for me. <laughs> but he does like my nut bread. I made nut bread this week. So I get him to eat that. He likes that. We had nut bread for breakfast this morning. All right, let's put a little here, and I think I'm going to stump off my seven. Let's stamp off my, no, let's hold it for the eight. Let's do the eight first. Hi, Janet. Good morning, Janet. Good morning, good morning. Lucia says she was advocate for many years with the local women crisis center that was an interesting job janet says hello ladies everybody's saying hello back it was sadness every day lucia says my grandmother's name grandma's my name and spoiling's my game gloria says yes you got it gloria you got that down right I'm going to turn this over because I'm carving on the top and it's, I don't like how it's, the sturdy, the back of it's more sturdy. Joan says, Lucia, you know how horrible it is, especially the kids, heartbreaking. I just wasn't strong enough. Oh, Janet's doing good. Hi, Cynthia McCoy. Welcome. Oh, she's, she's leaving. Did I? Did I say hello to her? Well, I'll say goodbye, Cynthia. Thanks for coming. Yes. Those say cheese sandwiches with tomato soup. Grilled cheese with tomato soup. Yum. Love not live. Stephanie's back. Zoe says, I'm back and my makeup is done. Zoe is going gothic today for a party. I still haven't figured out what you're wearing, Stephanie, but I'm sure it's got some black leather in it. But I think you should have some red leather because it's Christmas. Uh, and probably some silver, some silver and gold duded up bling. That's what I would try to do if I were going gothic, but... <laughs> I think I'm too old for gothic. Debbie's, hi Debbie. She says, I've been lurking and eating chips and dip. You're making me hungry. You're making me hungry, Debbie. All I got here is my cold cup of coffee. I haven't finished drinking it yet from this morning. But I'll take a sip. It's hazelnut. 
Janet says, I just made banana strawberry muffins with white chocolate chips. Oh, yum. Janet says, I love to make leftover meatloaf panini. Oh, that sounds good. She adds some sauce and mozzarella. That sounds good, Janet. Janet's saying hello to everybody. Joan says, holy moly, I'm hungry. <laughs> Whoops, I got out of chat. What happened here? Zoe says, it's an old Metallica bowling shirt. Oh, okay. Stephanie says, I wear black leather a lot. I have this black leather vest that I probably got in the 90s or the 80s. It wasn't 60s. But it's a nice one. And it could probably qualify as gothic if I dressed it up a little wear it to work a lot. It's a nice vest. I still have it. I think I got this paisley print pin on it. Paisley pin that somebody made me in one of the swaps. I think I put that on it. I'd wear, a, wear it a lot with, um, of course, I wasn't going gothic, but when I kind of wanted to be business casual at work, I will wear that black vest and a pair of light tan wool pants. In the winter, it was kind of a fun outfit to put on for the day. Some of those offices didn't let you wear blue jeans and stuff like that. Business casual, you had to be, because you met the public, you had to be a little dressy. You couldn't just go sloppy. But they'd have casual Friday where you could wear blue jeans, but... Yeah... My brother's sneezing in the other room. You gotta sneeze. You gotta sneeze. Bless you. <laughs> Those were the days. Those, I kind of miss my, my, can't really call them career days. I call them my working days, I guess. I, I miss the work. I don't miss the social so much because I have you guys. I hate to think of being out of work and not not having you guys to talk to not having YouTube YouTube really has saved the day for me of doing things keeping me busy and occupied and it's not about the money I think it's more about the social than the money and I learn a lot Janice says I love my French vanilla in coffee and my hot chocolate yum Stephanie's laughing, Metallica. Hi, Mika. Welcome, welcome, Mika. Good to see you here. I remember you from our international chat. Let's see, I wrote you down. You are from Belgium. Mika is from Belgium. Let's welcome Mika to our chat. Yes, bless the brother sneezing. Avenue, 33rd is in the house, Ruby. So I think I'm caught up with chat. Let's, let's carve these around these numbers. I think I'm going to have to carve it up with my, my little blade. I just love how these erasers carve. I want big erasers to carve with this high polymer. And Pentel would listen to Mary. But then they'd probably charge me so much I couldn't afford it. Because even these little ones are $2 retail. Two of these would be $4. Eight of them would be, what, $16? It, well, I wouldn't need eight, though. I, I need two, four, six, eight. Four, the size of uh, four of these would be that wide, probably about a little over, maybe two and a half inches wide by about five inches tall would be okay. Maybe a little bit, maybe three by five. I could get along with a three by five piece, Pintel. Are you listening to me? Why aren't you in my live stream today? <laughs> 
Where are they? I want my three by five pin tail erasers. They're not only for erasing. They are for cutting up. They're probably going, you're carving my eraser. You're wasting all that high polymer priceless high polymer plastic whatever it is latex free that's probably what makes them cost so much they're latex free anything that's latex free is going to be just a little bit more expensive i think i think i don't know i'm making a mess out of this Let's see if i can't clean it up a little <laughs> I don't know if I did it. Let's let's put some snowflakes in it. Well, no, let's I gotta carve this out. Hi Jerry. Oh Jerry's gonna go live. Are you gonna go live? Jerry, are you gonna do that live? Recycle parts for art. It's going to do her angel at 3 o'clock. I made you a moderator. Okay. I'm going to be home today. 3 o'clock your time is 2 o'clock my time. So it'll be in a couple hours. Hi, Kathy Whitney. Okay. I I just, this is just impromptu, uh, Jerry. I wanted to carve these stamps in my live last night, but I got to painting that envelope and it was getting late. And I want to do these numbers for my December daily. So I decided just to do an impromptu. But let's get back to Jerry's going to do a live stream today. Is it a, It's going to be a live stream at 3 o'clock and she's going to do her, her angel, her Christmas angel. I think it's made out of a paper bag. Jerry, if people work along with you can you tell us what we need we'll probably need a paper bag and some lace and oh she's off to get her off to get her stuff ready tell us what we need jerry before you leave people that want to work with you did she leave i guess we'll find out then Oh, you listed the your supplies on your Facebook page. Okay. Recycle parts for art. I would think it would be pretty basic. I will be there. I'm just about done carving these, so... I can't wait. I might make a smaller one for my December daily. Maybe about the size of the tag that we did on our Zoom. So, if you're going to be around this afternoon, watch for Jerry at Recycle Parts for Art. She's going to go live with her paper bag Christmas Angel. And I will probably, if, if I'm a mod, well, I might be able to work along, uh, along with her, but I've got to pay attention. I've got to pay attention in case a troll comes in. <laughs> All right, let's stamp seven and eight off, and then I've got just got nine and zero. Here's eight. What did I do with seven? There's six. Here's seven. Let's stamp these two off. There's my ink. Should be inking this up different, but this is just for testing anyway. at all on that. Woo, Mary, are you getting good or what? <laughs> it's the, or what? This is the eight. 
let's I see a nick in here I probably did that on purpose but I don't like it I don't know about that where's my red one I don't like it what did you do Yeah, that's a little better. All right, let's see how it looks. Whoops. Thank you, Becky. And welcome, Kathy Whitney. Don't forget the zero. No, I got nine and zero on my next stamp. Joan. Oh, that eight. <laughs> that eight is leaning. It is leaning. I love it. It's leaning. It's like a snowman. It's going to tip over. I love it. <laughs> the eight's a little, an italic eight. It's a little italic. I'm going to leave it that way because I'm not going to recarve it. Let's open. I have to open another um, because I need three. There's ten numbers, so four numbers to a stamp. I need to open another stamp here. We just got two left, and I'll have my numbers. I'm sure glad I got these on at that liquidation sale. I couldn't afford to do this otherwise. At two dollars a pop. Well, maybe a once one time thing that would be six dollars for these numbers. One too bad. You could buy a set of numbers for six dollars. All right, we're gonna do nine and zero. And I will not have to well, I think I will anyway cut it apart. Where's my It'll be easier to stamp them individually if they're cut apart. Okay, I need my pen. That's my Sharpie. Here it is. I love my lopsided eight. It looks like a snowman who's on his way home. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm a little tired today. <laughs> that old snowman is saying. He's a little lopsided. He's a little leaning over. I'll have to stamp him, what, four times? Eight, sixteen, twenty-four, three times. Maybe I can stamp them a little right side up. Stand him up straight a little more. I don't think these two are going to be that hard to carve. They got some curves, but they're wide curves. They aren't tiny curves. So I'll go nicking everything. These are my last two. Yay! And Jerry Bellini is going to do her Christmas Angel at 3 o'clock p.m. That'll be Eastern Time. So Central Time will be 2. Mountain Time will be 1. <laughs> Pacific Time will be 12. And I don't know what time it is on the other side of the world. 
I have to ask or use a world clock. I usually ask the gals who come in from internationally, like, what time are you? Is it bedtime? All right, let's let's carve this away. Oh, let's put it on. There. Let's see if I can't curve it a little here. try to keep my fingers out of the way. I don't always do it, but I try. Oops. Mika's in Belgium. It's 7.38 in Belgium. 7.38 in the evening. So, it'll pretty soon be bedtime over there. That makes sense because I think London time is about six hours ahead of Central time. So if it's what here, almost what eleven thirty, twelve thirty, and then yeah. No, it's 12.30 here. Or a little after 12.30. Oops. What I did there. get these numbers carved so I can have a little break before Jerry comes on. She's thinking. Someone hid Cynthia McCoy. I don't know why. Oh. I don't know either. Hi, Ann. Lynn, can you unhide Cynthia? She's okay. I got some new stencils in the mail today, Debbie says. I'm going to go and play with my jelly plate. Have a good time with your jelly plate, Debbie. Can't wait to see what you do. I don't know if I can change that in my... I don't know if I can get there.
I'm going to see if I can uh, live streaming. I don't see any place here where I can unhide her. I don't know why she was hidden. I don't think I can unhide her until afterwards. I would if I could. Cynthia, if you're still in here, I'm sure sorry that this happened to you. I thought there was a place in here where you could I'm looking now. <laughs> in my in my uh, studio to see if there's a place where I can and I don't see it for this I know it's here someplace and I don't think I, I can unhide her Cynthia said goodbye. Okay. I hope she heard me apologize to her. I might try to get a hold of her after chat. Or get a hold of, of Lynn and find out why she hid her. I didn't see... I, I kind of trust my mods to do the right thing, so maybe she said something out of line. I don't know. I wouldn't think she, she would, but it may have been a mistake. You know, I hit, I fat finger things. I fat finger things a lot, so maybe it was just a mistake. Or maybe I don't see Lynn in here. I didn't see Lynn say hi. Maybe it was from another. It said that she was hidden by Lynn, but I don't see Lynn in here. So it could have been a holdover from another stream. And I'm wondering if it was and if I need to unblock her somehow. Because I sure don't see either one of them in here now. So I'll try to get a hold of Cynthia offline and apologize to her and see if I can't unblock her. Hi, Zoe. Welcome back. You just finished carving today? B, hi, B. Welcome in here. B does, if you haven't been following B on Instagram, you need to go do that. 
There she is right there. Her Go follow her channel. Go follow her on Instagram. She's doing some wonderful, wonderful stamp carvings for Carve December. I love what you're doing, B. I always look for them on Instagram. <laughs> you and G Brody is really... Well, and then I follow... I think Julie Topaz is doing some, or is she doing the sketch -a days I can't remember. I try to follow you guys on Instagram. Oops. I'm just about done here. I got detracted by that. We're going to have to figure out what happened to Cynthia. Because I don't even see Lynn in here. So that might be a holdover from another chat. I wonder if it is. And I think it's probably a big old boo-boo. Like a fat finger or something. I've got to figure out what's going on there. I'll do that. After Jerry's live. <laughs> I want to finish these numbers so I can get this done today. Nine and zero. Nine and zero. Let me clean this up a little. I think all I have to do now is put in my little flakes. My little snowflakes. Starry snowflakes, I guess you can call them. Oh, no, i got to carve this circle out here. Uh, Stephanie, um... Of course, you haven't been commenting a lot in a row. You know about not being able to comment several times in a row. It says, take a break. That happens to me a lot. It could be a YouTube thing. Because I wouldn't think that if somebody gets blocked in one stream or... Well, it could be if they block them in one stream and they come into the next stream... I'll have to see if Cynthia's blocked. I know I was hunting for the options there to tell you who you blocked, but I couldn't find it on this. I'll have to look after chat and see if Cynthia's been blocked. If she has been, it's certainly been unintentional. Because I've never seen her do or say anything that would get her to be blocked. It's probably an operator error. But I generally trust my mods and trust their judgment. And even if they goof, I, I trust that too because I know what it's like to goof. Mary goofs a lot. <laughs> Sometimes I think you guys come in here to see what Mary's going to goof at today. <laughs> That's sometimes more fun than just sitting and listening to her yak away. Let's see where she goofs. I goof a lot. I goof a lot. My last big snafu was snafu was uh, crediting that Christmas card to Kendra, and it was Don Andrus who sent it to me. Boy, how embarrassing was that? I'm just about done here. What did you carve today, B? You said you just finished uh, carving. What did you carve today? You were unable to check post for a while last night, Janet? Well, I noticed that you were awfully quiet. You know, Janet, Janet participates a lot. She drops links, and I appreciate that. She goes and gets links for us when we... When we 
are talking. I think you went and got somebody went and got uh, Mark Murr's link to his. Uh, am I? Am I buffery? Uh, what am I doing here? No, I'm still live. I'm not going there. Um, but I noticed for the longest time, Janet wasn't saying anything last night. Look, I'm not carved here. And I wondered where she was. I thought, well, maybe she's got family that she's taking care of. So then all of a sudden she came back. So maybe that is a YouTube thing. And maybe this glitch with Cynthia is a YouTube thing too. But you know, I just remembered, and I've got to go do this while I'm thinking of it. On my Chrome here, where I'm in, I think it is in my... Uh, not in the live stream options, but over here in my community op. You got to get a look. If you've never seen the inside of the YouTube, this is the old studio. Let's see. I need to go back. I need to go back one here and go to community. And open it up. Come on. Open up. Come on. Takes a little on this old phone. Oh, I went to somebody's channel. Come on. And community settings, I think. Let's see if, if Cynthia's blocked. Here's where my mods are. Here are hidden users. There she is. There. If anybody knows Cynthia McCoy, tell her to come back. Let's, whoops. Let's uh, save my changes. She was blocked for some reason. I unblocked her. While I'm here, let's see. Well, I'll do that later. I want to make Mark Murr uh, a... Gloria's back. You're making a flower. You're going to post it tomorrow, B says. Okay. 33rd says she was booted out several times last night. Well, that is a YouTube thing. It said, error, try again later. Huh. That's interesting, Janet. YouTube's fooling around. Joan says, I may be crazy, but I think Cynthia's message, which is deleted now, used the phrase, take a break. Well, Joan, when I checked my settings here just a minute ago, it had Cynthia blocked. So, I, I'm i not sure how she got blocked, but I just went in and unblocked her and saved it. So, if any of you know Cynthia, tell her to come back. Um... Uh, yeah, I don't think you can get blocked and not know it, but I think um, I think in one of my other chats that Lynn accidentally blocked her, because Lynn's not in here, and on here it said that Lynn blocked her, and Lynn's not even here. So I think it picked, I think Cynthia pro tried to say something, and it put out that message saying that, that she was blocked. So I went in there and unblocked her. I think it was just a big snafu. So, hi, Julie, Julie, welcome. Julie Topaz, girl, welcome, welcome. I'm slowly getting my numbers carved here. We had a little, a little blocking issue here that shouldn't have happened. I feel so bad when that happens. I need to apologize to her. Is she, do any of you know if she's on Facebook? If anybody you it, uh, knows her as a friend or she's in any of the groups, let me know so that I can message her and apologize to her and tell her it was a snafu. Because she certainly has no reason to be blocked. Usually you block people when they're causing trouble, and she certainly did. She just tried probably to say hi.
one more little thing and I'll stamp these off. Where was I? In here? Let's cut this in half. And stamp them off and see how they stamp off. Poor Cynthia. Man, do I feel bad. Now, if she were causing trouble, I wouldn't feel bad at all. Whoops, that's the zero. We'll do that later. Um, if she were causing trouble, I wouldn't feel bad, but she wasn't causing any trouble. <laughs> I got the Leaning Tower of Eight here. I dropped my stamp, so what's going on here? Come on. Well, there's my nine. I've got to clean it up a little. What's going on here? There we are. I won't block you, Joan. I promise. Cross my heart. You know her. She's from Dawn's group. Okay. I'm going to try to find her because I'm in Dawn's group. I'll try to find her and message her, um, Janet. And uh, I will apologize to her. Bye, Joan. Have a really good day. Gloria says, Janet got Mark Slink. She's the best. Yes. Oh, I knew it was one of you that got Mark Slink the, the other night. We were talking about his, um, his cloche. Cloche? C-L-O-C-H-E. Stephanie was telling me how to pronounce it in the... Boy, that nine looks like an upside-down six, doesn't it? She was telling me how to pronounce it last night. i got to go back and look. We were talking about Mark's... It was his Love Winter for the Creative Arts Collaboration Group. A couple years ago, he made that. But it really... It turned out really nice. I put his link in my video from last night my live stream last night so if you're curious about it it's there close close i know you were saying that it's like a sh sound not a ch sound like a sh sort of a soft sound i think you said at the end and it's a clear kind of clear bell-shaped or even a cylinder-shaped glass that you put over objects to dust cover. <laughs> glass dust cover. Where's my zero? Let's stamp it off. I'll bet you guys are just bored stiff. Except for when I... when we accidentally blocked Cynthia... Ah, things happen. Things happen. I'm sure that was not meant to be. I will go apologize to her and tell her she's certainly welcome in my chat. I'm going to leave that like that. It's a little octagonal, but what I want to do now, what I want to do is I'm not going to stamp them off on my foil paper, but I do want to make good copies and put them in here. And I'll do this really fast. There are my doodle squares. This is my... Uh, 2018 Carved December book. <laughs> Where I've basically been playing. So we've got one and three, two and four, five and seven, six and eight, and nine and zero. So one... I'm going to stamp these off real fast here because I want to have them documented. They may not be perfect, but I'll have them in there. Oh! That needs some cleaning up. I'll leave it. One... Two. I'll leave that just for now. That didn't happen on my other one. I probably 
way I ink it. One, two, goes this way. Three. Four. That's the nine. Five. Six. Six needs a little cleaning up. The one needs a little cleaning up. Seven. I like that seven. Now eight leans. My eight leans to that way, so I wanted to turn it just a little this way when I stamp it. My eight leans. Let's see if I can just turn it just a little. See what happens here. Eight. He's still not kind of leaning. I might have to recarve that eight. Maybe on the back of one of nine or zero here. I won't do it today. You guys are probably ready to go. Nine. I was making room for my zero here. I'm going to put the zero. I think I'll put the zero right in there. Zero. There. Now I want to document it. I'll just write December daily numbers. So that's what I want them for. And Mary Dell Abrams. And this is 12, 8, 18. I want to put the Marriott TA here just for the fun of it. And I'm going to call this done, except I'm going to re-carve uh, my eight off camera. Probably re-stamp them again. How fun this has been. How fun this has been. Can I put this over here? No. for coming in and saying hello to me i sure do appreciate it don't forget that uh jerry bellini is going to go live in just about an hour a little less than an hour she's going to do her christmas angel thank you aunt beck my eight kind of tips over i'm going to recarve my eight and i might smooth out my zero i might play clean up my one play with them a little thank you everybody for coming in have a great afternoon. If you can catch Jerry at Recycle Parts for Art, she's going to be on in a little bit. So thank you for coming. Bye.